wikihow 611 https colon double forward slash www.rapitables.com forward slash tools forward slash notepad dot html https forward slash forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash category youth https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash no dash when dash a dash girl dash is dash hiding dash something https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash date dash without dash your dash parents dash knowing https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash get dash to dash no dash a dash girl https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash no dash if dash a dash shy dash girl dash likes dash you dash at dash school https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash obtain dash money dash from dash your dash parents https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash fall dash asleep dash left parenthesis for dash kids signs she is hiding something and how to confront her about it Download article. Body language and behavior clues that a girl is keeping secrets. Co-authored by Maya Diamond, Ma and Hannah Madden. Last updated, the 19th of June, 2024. Fact checked. Signs she is hiding something. Confronting her. Q and A. Tips. Do you ever feel like someone is hiding something from you? We all have reasons to keep secrets from time to time, but if it's your close friend or your partner, you're probably worried that she's keeping something big from you. While not all secrets are bad, there are some telltale ways you can find out if a girl is hiding something. Keep reading to learn exactly how to spot shifty behavior and how to talk to her about it. How do you know if someone is hiding something? When a girl is hiding something, she might avoid certain topics or act nervous around a specific person. She might also be more secretive about her phone or get angry and lash out easily. Confront her by sitting down in a private place and addressing your concerns. Ask her to share whatever she's been hiding to get it all out into the open. Method 1. Signs she is hiding something. Download article 1. She avoids certain topics. Do you notice that every time you bring up a specific topic or person, she gets shifty? Maybe she quickly changes the subject. Or stops replying if you two are texting. This could mean that she doesn't want to talk about something related, so she's avoiding it altogether. 1. Does her demeanor change when a particular subject is brought up? Does the change occur when a certain person is around? Does she seem to feel uncomfortable when she is in a specific location? Is there an upcoming event that she does not want to discuss? 2. She is fidgety or nervous when talking about something. Take note of any time she can't stop moving or seems anxious when you bring up a topic. This is a telltale sign that she's hiding something or doesn't want to talk about a certain subject. 2. Other signs of nervousness include she seems to be thinking really hard, 3. Her eyes frequently flickering toward an exit, 4. She frequently pauses when giving responses, 5. She changes the subject abruptly. She crosses her arms across her chest or protects other vulnerable areas, like her throat. She shares too many details, 
six. She leans backward, as if trying to physically distance herself, seven. There's a stillness in her arms and legs, eight. There's a lack of emphatic gesturing, nine. She stops using I statements and refers to people by names. Instead of him or her, ten. She avoids answering questions completely, eleven. She clears her throat and swallows hard frequently, twelve. Three. She becomes more protective of her phone. Maybe she used to have no problem with you grabbing her phone to look up a song or take a quick pic. If she's hiding something, she might change the passcode to something you don't know or take her phone with her wherever she goes. This is probably because there's something on her cell that she doesn't want you to see. 13. She might also turn the screen away from you when she's texting, or keep her phone on silent so it doesn't ring when someone calls her. 4. She seems absent-minded or distracted. Maybe you're telling a funny story. When you look over and see she's deep in thought. Or maybe you ask her a question, and all she can answer is, home. If she's got other stuff on her mind that she doesn't want to share with you yet, she might be thinking about that instead of what's in front of her. 14. She might also start leaving her belongings behind in public places, or forgetting to do simple tasks and chores. 5. She gets angry or annoyed easily. If she's hiding something that's making her upset, she might be struggling to keep that anger in. You may notice that she blows up at small things, or gets mad at you for simple mistakes. These are signs that she's struggling with something internally, th that may or may not have to do with you. 15. 6. Other people notice a change in her behavior. Ask a mutual friend's opinion on your suspicions. Choose someone who knows both of you and ask your friend if they have noticed the same odd behavior. If this friend has noticed something off, they might be able to make sense of her behavior. 7. Something just seems off about her. If this is someone that you spend a great deal of time around, you will likely become aware pretty quickly that something seems different or off. Make a mental note and continue making observations about when she seems different than she usually does. 16. This can be a tough one to quantify, but you'll know it when you see it. Maybe she's not as bright and bubbly as she usually is, or maybe she's being overly nice to you when she's usually more subdued. Sponsored by Mamashan. Method. 2. Confronting her. Download article. 1. Consider the severity of what she seems to be hiding. As you observe her behavior and what triggers it, think about what she might be hiding and how serious it is. If you think it's something small or trivial, it may not be worth it to confront her about it. If you are in a relationship with her, then perhaps she is hiding that she is cheating or that she picked up a bad habit she promised she would quit, like smoking. If she is a friend, maybe she is hiding something that was said about you behind your back. There is always the chance that she is hiding something positive, like a surprise gift or party. It's important to give her the benefit of the doubt. 2. Write down your suspicions beforehand. Creating a list of your suspicions or detailing one big suspicion, will help you to both look and feel more prepared as you confront her.
it also gives you the opportunity to refer to what behaviors, words, or actions made you come to these conclusions. Include anything strange about her behavior, including things she has said, ways she has acted, and odd behaviors she has displayed. Note your observations about what topics or people seem to trigger these changes in her demeanor. 3. Find a quiet time to talk to her. If she's your significant other, talk to her at home. If you two are just friends, go out to lunch or find a quiet cafe to sit down and chat. 17. If you're making plans in advance, don't tell her that you want to talk about her behavior. Instead, just invite her to hang out so she doesn't have her guard up. 4. Bring up the topic calmly and rationally. Do your best to defuse the situation by remaining calm. 18. Keep your tone of voice level and state your concerns in a way that doesn't accuse her or make her feel like the bad guy. However, this doesn't mean that you should be evasive or vague about what you're getting at. Be clear and straightforward about her secrecy so that she fully understands the conversation. I get the feeling lately that you're keeping something from me. My relationship with you is important to me, so I'd like to talk about it. You've had some interesting reactions to comments I've made lately. I don't want to offend you, but it seems like you might be keeping a secret. Can we talk about it? I've noticed recently that you've been extremely nervous most of the time I've been around you. Is something going on that you would like to talk about? 5. Explain your thoughts and observations to express your concerns. You are having this conversation with her because you are concerned about what is going on, and you want to resolve it, so help her understand that with your words and gestures. 19. Bring up examples in a kind, non-accusatory way. I've noticed lately that when Brian is around, you become distant and closed off. I'm wondering what has happened to bring on this change in you toward him. I'm here to help you. Recently, you've become a little secretive when we talk about our plans with other people. I'm concerned, and I want to know if there's something that you need to tell me. The last time that we were in Mrs. Smith's class, you seemed really jumpy and fidgety. I'm here for you if you want to talk about what happened to cause that. You told me the other night that you stayed in and read a book until you fell asleep, but Stacy said that the two of you went out dancing. I'm hurt that you lied to me, and I'm wondering why you felt the need to do that. 6. Listen attentively to her response. Remember to stay calm and give her the opportunity to respond to you without interrupting. If she continues to appear secretive, let her know that you are observing particular behaviors that indicate she might be lying, like an inability to maintain eye contact, making frequent pauses in her response, or giving too many details. Then, ask her again to be honest with you. I heard you say that. I understand that you feel. I appreciate that you agreed to talk about this with me, but I get the sense that you're still not being completely honest. Can you share the whole truth with me? I'm really glad that we're getting the opportunity to talk about this. However, it seems like you have more you want to say but haven't yet. Go ahead and share. If she continues to withhold what is really going on, consider the 
value of this friendship or relationship? What does it say about your relationship with her if she will not tell you the truth? 7. Give yourself time to process what she shares. In the event that she does share with you what she has been hiding, give yourself some time to think it over, especially if it's something negative. 20. You might ask her to give you some space or request that you don't talk to each other for a few days so that you can gather your thoughts. I really appreciate you sharing with me. I have to admit that my feelings are a little bit hurt. I'm going to collect my thoughts, and I'll reach out in a couple days when I'm ready to talk more. Consider her reasons for hiding it from you and the validity of those reasons. Should she have been honest with you from the beginning, or is her secrecy understandable? Evaluate the relationship, whether it was right of her to hide information from you, and what can be done to repair any hurt that was caused. Community Q&A Question why don't some of my friends want to talk to my best friend? Community answer. Not everybody gets along. I have friends who hate other friends of mine, and vice versa. You might have to spend time with your best friend one-on-one -on -one without your other friends. Not helpful for helpful 34. Question. Why does she hide her panties? Community answer. Maybe she's going through certain things she doesn't want to share, even with people she can trust. Maybe she's having accidents. If you think either of these are going on mention it and tell her that you are there to help. Not helpful to helpful 29. Question. I think my girlfriend is hiding the game Catan from me. What can I do? Community answer. Look for it. Not helpful 14 helpful 56. See more answers. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Always give her the benefit of the doubt before assuming the worst. Be open to what she has to say, because it may not be what you expect. Try to go. Into the conversation with an open mind and a willingness to really hear her. How to date without your parents. Knowing. Download article. Parts. 1. Questioning your decision to date without permission. 2. Making things seem like normal. 3. Dealing with your evident signs. Plus show one more. Other sections. Questions and answers. Tips and warnings. Related articles. Article summary. Co-authored by WikiHow staff. Last updated, the 16th of February, 2023. Everybody's parents have some time when they want you to date, but sometimes, it's not when you want. Generally, disobeying your parents and going behind their backs is not encouraged, but if you must do so, do it the right way. This guide can help. Part 1. Questioning your decision to date without permission. Download article. 1. Consider how dating without telling your parents affects your relationship with your parents. You're going to be lying to your parents. Constantly about something that is a big deal. Yes, it is a big deal. It matters. Enough to them to consider that you're not yet ready to date, so you must really. Think through the consequences of lying constantly and the potential of being. Caught out. Think about the following before going ahead with dating without. Telling them. You cannot share the joy of your feelings with your parents. You are lying all of the time. Not just once, twice or thrice, but constantly. 
that will wear you down eventually. Things are bound to slip up somewhere. A mistaken word, a chance meeting, another parent making a comment. Your parents have a good reason for forbidding the dating. Perhaps it's best to talk about that reason thoroughly before making your decision. 2. Remind yourself that you're still young. You have decades ahead of you to find that special person. This isn't a do or die decision, even if it feels like it at the time. 3. Think carefully about actually asking if you can date. Tell your parents that a guy or girl would like to date you and that you would like to do so. Explain that you understand they don't wish to permit it but give them plenty of reasons why you can be trusted and give them plenty of leeway to make conditions that control the dating, such as being in a group only and getting home early after each date. This may be much better than creeping about and lying all of the time. Read how to tell your parents you have a boyfriend for more information to help you. Part 2. Making things seem like normal. Download article. 1. Hang around your date with other people. This way, your parents won't get Suspicious as your date will be just one of the group. 2. Use your best friend as an excuse. If your boyfriend or girlfriend asks you on a date, tell your parents that you're going out with your best friend, who has to be the same gender as you. Your best friend must be willing to cover for you, if needed. Another alternative is to say that you're going on a girl's forward slash guy's night out. 3. Avoid using social media to connect. Think twice, and even three times. Before using Facebook or MySpace to talk to your boyfriend forward slash girlfriend. 4. Don't text your date loving stuff if your parents check your phone so often. Part. 3. Dealing with your evident signs. Download article. 1. Don't do anything that would make the fact that you're dating easy to notice, like getting hickeys. 2. Stay calm and on an even keel. Once you start dating a guy forward slash girl, it's probable that you'll be feeling really excited and happy. Most people will notice this change or glow that has come over you, and will surmise what's up. It's going to be even more evident if you're normally morose or glum. If your parent asks you what's up, just say something like I just don't think that it's right to be gloomy all the time, I'm trying to change and be more appreciative of everything. Three. Keep covering as best you can. Realize that this charade may have to go on for ages, and that's something you've got to carry within you and keep acting as. If things are normal on the outside, try to hide your relationship as much as possible until the pair of you break up or your parents decide you can start dating. When they tell you that you can start dating come home from school the next forward slash weekday, and tell them the news. Just be sure not to tell them you have a boyfriend forward slash girlfriend too quickly or you parents will get suspicious on why you happen to date right after them allowing you. 4. Deny it. If your parents pop the dreaded question, do you have a Boyfriend forward slash girlfriend, tell them that you don't, nor have you thought about getting one. It's an outright lie, and if they have evidence to the contrary, realize that you'll have walked right into a trap and things will probably not proceed that well from here. Part 4. Dealing with friends and your date. Download article. 
1. Keep it from friends if possible. If you can't hide it from your friends, only. Explain it to a few mutual friends and make them swear not to tell anyone. If they do tell someone, tell them that you are upset and not to tell anyone else. If the person that your friend told starts telling people, tell them to stop. If they don't stop tell them that it was a joke that you and your friend are playing on each other. 2. If your boyfriend or girlfriend wants to meet your parents, be ready to explain. Explain why you can't do this at the time. Community Q&A Question My boyfriend wants to hang out with me but I can't go out in public by myself and my parents won't let me date. How do I talk to him about this? Without hurting our relationship. Sarah Batalana Community Answer being honest is the best option for your relationship. Express how you feel about him and how you value your relationship, and explain why you have to listen to your parents regarding their rules about you dating. Maybe you could talk to your parents about having your boyfriend or friend spend some time at your home so they can get to know him better. That may make them feel more comfortable with you going out on an actual date. Not helpful 35 helpful 56. Question. What should I do if my boyfriend's guardian is homophobic and my parents are suspicious that we are dating? Sarah Batalana. Community answer. You have a few options for what you could do. The first would be to talk to your parents and tell them the truth about the situation. You could say something like, He and I are friends and like each other, but his guardian is homophobic and he isn't ready to come out to them yet. If your parents know you're gay, they may be understanding of keeping your relationship private. The other option is to Insist that nothing is going on between the two of you, though that could make it harder to tell your parents you are dating at some point in the future. Not helpful 19 helpful 31. Question. How do you date in secret if you're in middle school? Sarah Batalana. Community answer. It can be really hard when you're in middle school because you can't drive yet and that will make it harder to actually go on dates. Try arranging group hangouts or inviting the person over to your house. Also, consider talking to your parents about why it is they don't want you to date. Maybe you can come up with some kind of compromise so that you don't have to lie to them. Not helpful 33 helpful 62 if your boyfriend forward slash girlfriend is allowed to date and you aren't, tell them not to tell their parents because your parents will eventually meet and their parents might say something around the lines of I can't believe our kids have been dating for so long. The web of deceit grows larger, which makes it even harder to maintain. How to get to know a girl. Download article. Parts 1. Talking to girls 2. Knowing what to say 3. Getting to know girls better Plus show one more Other sections Expert Q&A Related articles References Article summary Co-authored by Image Bara Last updated, the 16th of June, 2024 Talking to girls is one thing, but getting to know them. Really getting to know them. That takes a lot more work. You can learn to have better conversations and be more comfortable in the conversations you have, to deepen your bond with girls that you talk to, getting to know them much better. Part 1. 
Talking to Girls Download Article 1. Have lots of short conversations first. Aim for many quick conversations. Instead of one long one, at first. If you want to be flirtatious and get a girl interested in getting to know you back, try to talk to her regularly. Talk in the hall during passing period at school. Exchange a few quick sentences, then say, talk to you later. Always establish that you'll talk again soon. This will help to ensure that you're thinking about her, and you'll both be thinking about each other. Walk up to her and say, hey. Hopefully, she responds and you can say one of these things listed or make something else up. What's your name? Or how's your day so far? 2. Listen when she speaks. One of the best ways to get a girl to open up more to you is to be a good listener. Focus on being a good listener. Show that you're interested in what she has to say. Don't dominate the conversation. Ask a question instead of launching into a story. Look at her while she talks and nod your head to show that you're paying attention. After she finishes, summarize what she said and use her name while you talk. This helps to show that you're giving her your personal attention. 3. Make eye contact. Eye contact is very important in establishing a good conversation. If you want to get to know a girl better, practice making better eye contact while you're speaking and while she's speaking. If you struggle to keep eye contact, or it makes you feel awkward, then practice. When you watch TV, practice holding the gaze of the TV actors as long as possible, or practice picking a spot on the face near the eyes, like the nose, the eyebrow, or another spot to hold your gaze. 4. Smile to put her at ease. If you want someone to open up to you, put them at ease by smiling. Even if you're feeling nervous, or feeling serious, or feeling the serious feelings about this girl, you need to relax yourself and relax her by flashing those pearly whites. Make your flirty talking face a smile. Even if you don't want to get to know this girl better. Romantically, it's still good to establish that you like talking to her and you enjoy her presence. A smile goes a long way in doing just that. 5. Read her body language. It's important to make sure you're not bugging someone by approaching them and asking questions. Make sure that your presence is okay by learning to read a girl's body language. If she's not into talking, she'll display some of the following body language, which means you should just end the conversation and leave her alone. Crossed arms. Frowning. Looking down and avoiding eye contact. A furrowed brow or confused face. Turning away from you. Very brief answers to questions. 6. Relax. If you're nervous every time you strike up a conversation with a girl, learn to calm yourself down in the moment. Be as natural as possible. Keep it simple and straightforward by keeping the conversation short. Lots of times, you'll be nervous because you think you won't have anything to talk about, or you'll say something dumb. We'll cover that in the next section. Quiz. Wiki how quiz, does she like me? Some girls can feel like a total mystery. How can you figure out if she likes you just as a friend or if she wants something more? Take this quiz to find out. 1 of 12. How do her friends treat you? They told me that she likes me. 
They giggle and laugh with her when I walk into the room. They've mentioned her in conversation. They haven't done anything out of the ordinary, or I don't know them. Next. Part. 2. Knowing what to say. Download article. 1. Ask questions instead of talking about yourself. Lots of people, especially. Guys, talk too much about themselves in conversation. If you tend to do that. When you're nervous, try to switch tactics. Instead, ask more questions and. Keep her talking about herself. This helps to take the pressure off of you and. Let's you learn a bit more about her. Make your questions complication and probing, but relatively. Light. It's always good to ask, what did you think of that test in? Chemistry. Did you feel good about it? Immediately asking a deep question about what she thinks of religion might be a little awkward. Use open-ended questions. If you ask, how are you today? It's easy to answer fine which doesn't give you much to work with. Ask a specific question that will take some time to answer. How's soccer going this year? Expert tip. John Keegan. Dating coach. Simple observations can work well, too. For instance, you might notice her. Outfit or mention an interesting detail of the space you're chatting in. Comments. Like these show genuine interest and can keep a conversation going. 2. Look for something you have in common. If you want to start a conversation and get to know a girl better, look for something that you share. This helps to build trust and companionship. If you can talk about something regularly, she'll know she can come to you about that subject. If you're in class together, you've always got that to talk about. Talk about how you're doing, how dull the teacher's lectures are, and other class-related topics. Try to study together. You at least know you probably live in the same town and can discuss things related to where you are. Talk about local things, hangouts, and topics specific to where you live. 3. Try to understand her sense of humor. It's much easier to talk to someone when you know what makes them laugh. Is she sarcastic? Goofy? Does she appreciate a good random line? Try to find out more about what she thinks is funny. Check out her Facebook page or other social media. What movies does she seem to like? What makes her right lol? Be careful. If you want to get to know a girl in a real way. Complimenting her space pants or asking her if it hurt when. She fell from heaven usually isn't the way to go. Pick up lines. While sometimes funny, are the most shallow way possible to. Start a conversation. Unless you want eye rolls, avoid using with. Lines. 1. 4. Follow up on something she has already said. Sometimes, the second and third conversation can be a lot more difficult than the first. Once you've covered the basic topics, what do you talk about? Learning to follow up is an essential conversational skill. Ask about what she's been doing since you talked last. How did that test go? Or how was your weekend? Are good follow-ups. Even just asking, hey, it's been a while. What have you been up to since we talked? If you talk about a movie, band, or some other subject, do a little research and bring it back up. I listened to that band you mentioned. 
I really like their second record. What's your favorite? 5. Don't argue, even to be funny. Picking on a girl you like is what kids do in elementary school. It's not a good way to get to know someone on a more personal level. If you like someone and want to get to know them better, avoid controversial topics and avoid an argument. A common pickup artist tactic is to try to subtly insult girls to make them more vulnerable. This isn't a good way to get to know someone. Eventually, you can and should disagree with people that you like. If you know her well, you don't have to always be agreeable. But at first, don't make a point of picking on someone, or they may get defensive or offended. 6. Don't write a script. When you get nervous, sometimes it seems like having a script would be helpful. Most of the time, this will come across as more awkward and uncomfortable than talking more naturally. Even if you're not a great conversationalist, don't be a robot reading a script. 7-7. Seven, seven. Befriend her. After you start talking to her, you should try to become her friend. Go to one of her friends and try to be friends with them first. It helps by letting the girl who you want to know that you can get along with her friends and make her trust you more. If she doesn't have any friends, then just focus on the girl. If you have classes with her, try to talk with her before the teacher starts teaching and when class ends. If you have to walk past her next class, then walk with her and talk. 8-8. Eight, eight. Tell her about yourself. Not giving her information about yourself will make you seem like a stalker or a creep. So if she asks a question, then give her the answer unless it's extremely personal. And you shouldn't ask personal questions either. Here's what not to ask or tell. Address. Phone number. Zip code. How much money you forward slash she have forward slash hers. 99. Know what questions you are comfortable with answering. This should. Include your favorite color, sexuality, favorite food, best friend, s, favorite. Teacher, favorite book, and favorite movie. 1010. Be careful with some things you do. These might ruin your chances. Never. Give gifts as a friend on any other day besides birthdays, vent without asking. Ask to date a week after you meet, ask to go over your house after only a week. And hardcore flirt over pickup lines. Part. 3. Getting to know girls better. Download article. 1. Spend some time together one-on-one. -on -one. It's hard to get to know someone well. In a group. If you want to deepen your bond, spend time alone together. Go. Somewhere you can have a quiet talk, like a coffee shop or a restaurant in the middle of the day. If you go to school together, just finding a quiet place to sit, away. From other students can be a great way to have a private conversation. It doesn't have to be a date and calling it one can put a lot more pressure on things. Just find an excuse to hang out together and talk. 2. Ask more complicated questions. Eventually, your conversation needs to deepen beyond talk of school and bands and movies. If you want to get to know someone better, ask about her opinions on serious issues. Find about what she thinks about. Talk the real talk. Stay informed about world events and politics. Ask about her opinions regarding recent elections, 
or talking points. Find out what she cares about. Ask about her anxieties and fears. What kind of a person is she? What keeps her up at night? 3. Talk about the future. What does she want to do with her life? Where does she want to be in 10 years? What makes her happy? These are important questions that will be good to talk about down the road if you want to get to know someone. If you're in school together, talk about your future in school. Is she hoping to go to college? What will she study? What does she want to be beyond school? If you're beyond school, talk about where you'd like to progress in life. Where do you want to live? Are you satisfied in your job? Do you want a family? Kids. 4. Open yourself up, as well. Your job isn't to impress a girl, or wow her with your accomplishments. 2. Your job is to be real if you want to get to know someone. Be yourself. Conversation is a give and take. Share deeper feelings and anxieties that you have, if you want to learn about hers. Open up and put yourself out there. It's possible to go too far with all the questions and come off as kind of a creep. If you never bring anything to the table, but want to know whether or not she wants kids, it won't seem like a conversation. It'll seem like an interrogation. You've got to talk about things, too. Let her ask questions as well, but don't wait for her to. You should both be sharing about an equal amount. But if she wants to talk more, let her. 5. Get to know her family. Seeing how someone interacts with their family can be a very telling experience. If you want to really see what someone is like, see how they interact with their parents. See how they treat their brothers and sisters. See how their family gets along. This might take a while, but if you've been hanging out with someone a lot, coming over for dinner, or a quick hangout is pretty common. Let her ask you first, don't invite yourself over. Introduce yourself to her family, and see how they react to you. As well, learning about someone's parents can be just as revealing as learning about someone. Ask her a question. Most people can be very open to start getting to know somebody, others can be a little shy, but don't worry. Just take a deep breath and try starting a conversation. Girls. Love it when you get into interesting topics. Expert video. Expert Q&A. Question. How do I tease a girl without offending her? Image Bara. Dating coach. Expert answer. If you do accidentally seem to offend her, use it as a learning opportunity. Own. Up to it. Say, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I didn't think I was going to touch a point. And then that can either work out one of two ways, either she's going to be very prideful and very annoyed, or she can recognize that you're being nice. Owning up to what you said, and apologizing. It's a good opportunity to see how the two of you would handle conflict. Not helpful to helpful 13. Question. How do I let a girl know that I'm just looking for something casual? Image Bara. Dating coach. Expert answer. I think that should be one of the things you say right off the bat. Just be honest. And say something like, I'm having a great time with you and I want to be. Honest. 
Right now, I'm not in any place to be in a serious relationship, but I think. You're really cool. I would love to start off with a very casual relationship. And. Honestly, if it builds from there, I'm completely open to the idea of what could. Arise. I don't want to plan anything, though. I don't have any expectations. I just. Want to be very upfront with you. I don't want to play games. Not helpful zero helpful nine. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Try to make her laugh. You can invite her out to lunch with some of her friends and your friends so she feels comfortable. Be yourself. Don't try to act smarter, cooler, or tougher than you really are. Warnings. Don't make fun of her, just some friendly teasing is fine. Ask for her number in a nice way. How to know if a shy girl likes you. At school. Download article. Methods. 1. Identifying romantic body language. 2. Identifying verbal cues. 3. Being direct. Other sections. Expert Q&A. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References Article Summary Co-authored by J.T. Tran Last updated, the 26th of April, 2024 References Shy girls want the same things any other girl wants. They want friends, success, and love. They just won't always put themselves out there in order to get it. That means if you like a shy girl, you're going to have to take proactive measures. Look for the signs to see if maybe she's hiding a crush for you just behind the wall of her shyness. Method 1. Identifying romantic body language. Download article 1. Notice eye contact. Eye contact is an important part of human interaction, and it just so happens that when people feel romantically inclined or particularly at ease with someone, a natural physical response is for the pupils to dilate. 1. If she holds your gaze longer than normal, or if you find her staring your way. Frequently, this could be a sign that she's interested in you. Each case will be different, but shy people tend to favor indirect. Interaction, so you may never catch her looking your way. If she avoids looking at you entirely, this can also be a strong sign. She's interested. Another scenario might be she is looking straight at the clock, whiteboard, or friends to distract herself. And will look all directions except at you. 2. Watch for jealousy. Some shy girls may become jealous if you flirt with others. She may become irritated with you after you've talked with other girls, or might get hurt when you're not there for her in a more than a friend capacity. 2. Is she bummed out when you miss her volleyball game against the big rivals? She may be hiding a crush for you if this is the case. 3. Keep an eye on her wrists and hands. Women often expose their wrists when romantically or physically interested in someone. 3. But even if she's only touching your arm or holding on to you in a crowd, reaching gestures from her to you may mean she looks to you for support on a deeper level. 4. Often it is common for a shy girl to initiate physical contact. Accidentally, repeating this later as a way of determining whether the touch was welcome or not. 5. Try brushing your hand against hers to see how she reacts. If she seems comfortable with that, it could be a sign that she's interested in you. 6. 4. 
watch out for blushing. She will be more prone to blush around someone she likes. 7. Keep an eye out for reddened cheeks and face, if she's red-faced around you, she could be hiding deeper feelings. 5. Pay heed to distance and orientation. Some claim that one of the strongest clues you have about another person's interest in you is the distance that person stands from you. The closer a person stands, the more likely that person would consider you as a romantic partner. Also, the direction her feet point might point out whether she's digging you or looking to dash out the door. 6. Note her wardrobe and preening gestures. If she dresses up in special clothes when you hang out, or if she adds a special touch, like makeup, this could mean that she's dressing up to impress you. 8. When you catch her looking in the mirror and straightening her bangs, her preening to look good for you is a strong indication she might have a crush on you. 7. Watch for tilting and leaning. If you find her frequently leaning in close when you are speaking and tilting her head while you speak, this is a strong indication of engagement and interest. 9. The more frequently you see this behavior, the more likely she is interested in you as more than a friend. Method 2. Identifying verbal cues Download article 1. Observe small compliments It might not seem like a big deal to you when she compliments your new sneakers, but her noticing changes in your outfit or appearance and complimenting you could be her way of showing you she's interested enough in you to pay attention. 10. 2. Pay attention to how she talks. Many shy people are worried about saying the wrong thing, which sometimes leads to quietness around a crush. Oppositely, nervousness at being close to a crush might cause a shy girl to be a little more chatty. In either case, research has shown that if she responds to you smoothly and quickly, she likely is interested in some kind of relationship with you. 11. 3. Give the girl you like compliments. Small praise has a profound effect on people, but this effect is more pronounced with potential romantic partners. 12. 13. Does your girl light up when you pay her simple praise? She may be crushing on you. 4. Listen for laughter. When she peppers your conversation with pleasant laughter at your wit and charm, it could mean she wants you to like her. Listen. For frequency. Laughing more with you than others could be a love letter from her subconscious. 5. Take note of volume and pitch. Notes in lower registers are subconscious. Attempts at showing off, which makes a dreamy or husky quality in her voice a good sign for you. She may be loud around others, but quiet around you. These are often hints she is interested. 6. Ask through a mutual friend. Shy people frequently fear direct confrontation. So asking her if she has feelings for you through a note passed on through a friend or in a message that friend relates to her could save you from unnecessary detective work. 14. Remember, she will find out that you asked. And sometimes people use this information to pick on other. There is nothing wrong with asking someone if they like you. Remember that some shy girls are very reserved and may keep their crush a secret, even from their best friends. It's important that you take time to read your situation to see if this kind of inquiry is a good decision. Method 3. 
Being direct. Download article. 1. Ease her into conversation. Since she's a shy girl, it is important during this stage that you don't force her to talk with you. She might need time to adjust to being around you or to speaking with you, and rushing her into conversation could cause her stress. 15. When checking to see if she likes you, first talk about low-stakes topics, like the weather, teachers, classmates, or daily life. Be patient. And it is likely she will become more comfortable with you. It might take time before she's ready to break out of her shell, so be persistent if she is even slightly responsive. Try talking about yourself first, to help her feel more comfortable. Then, ask questions that will get her to talk about herself, like where she'd like to travel or what she likes to do for fun. 16. Read a poll. We asked 567 Wikihow readers, and 51% of them agreed that the best way to help a shy or introverted girl feel more comfortable is by giving her time and space to open up. Take poll. 2. Share regular conversation with her. Studies have found that people naturally speak more around those that they like and have romantic interest in. 17. When you share conversations with her that go on and on, or if you find her more conversant around you, take this as a sign of interest. Also, speaking with her more should put her more at ease around you, which will make asking her out less difficult. Some topics you can use to get her started include Future plans Hobbies and sports Family Favorite class Dream job 3. Use soft communication styles when asking direct questions After weeks of wondering, does she like me? You might be ready to ask, but with a shy girl this might not be the best decision. Try to approach whatever question is on your mind in a way that gives an escape if the question is too uncomfortable. 18. Whatever you do, do not comment on how shy she is, as this could make her even more self-conscious and less willing to talk. 19. Instead of asking, want to go to a movie with me. You might instead mention, that movie looks really great. I was hoping to see it next week when it comes out, but I don't have anyone to go with. 4. Try asking her out. If you see a lot of the signs and signals of romance in your relationship with her, and you believe that she likes you, Trust your instincts. And remember, the rejection is rarely enjoyable, if you never try, you'll never have a chance of finding that special someone. Expert Q&A Question How can I flirt with a shy girl without embarrassing her? JT Tran Dating Coach Expert Answer Try being physically flirtatious but make sure it's something she's okay with. For instance, you might touch her hand, then see whether she seems both emotionally and physically comfortable before you continue. Not helpful 15 helpful 15. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Try not to attract a lot of attention to the shy girl. Shy girls don't like that. Making an honest effort will be appreciated. Some shy girls give mixed signals, they don't always know how to react to situations or conversations and may back off or defer if uncomfortable. Show more tips. Tips from our readers. Make sure you're bringing up a mutual interest when talking to her. 
if she likes anime and you like anime, then talk about anime with her. If she likes animals and you're an animal lover, talk about animals with her. She may talk very little at first, but she'll open up in time. Some shy girls are loud and talkative around their friends but quiet around others, including you. Don't embarrass or draw attention to her, but look for signs like her blushing when you're around. Make the first move. Worst case, she'll probably be very empathetic and let you down easy and try to avoid any awkward confrontation. How to obtain money from your Parents Methods 1. Asking for money when you live at home 2. Asking for money when you've moved out Other sections Expert Q&A Tips and warnings Related articles References Article summary Co-authored by Supatra Tova, PSYD, Road Last updated the 21st of March, 2024. Children and young adults usually have few ways to make substantial income, yet need money from time to time. If your parents are able to support you, there is nothing wrong with asking them for a little help. Having a specific number and reason for the money is essential. You should offer anything you can in reward from doing extra chores to simply working harder in school. Be nice to them, and grateful for anything they give you. Method 1. Asking for money when you live at home. Download article 1. Decide whether you should only approach one parent. Your goal shouldn't be to pit one parent against the other. However, asking for a little cash doesn't need to turn into a major financial transaction. If you need 8 bucks for a movie ticket, try asking one of your parents. If you need more like 50, it may need to involve both of them. Small amounts of money may not be much of a debate. For larger sums of money, they will appreciate that you Approached both of them, and take the allowance seriously. You may have one parent who is more sympathetic to childhood or teenage hobbies. If you are only asking one, make it that one. 2. Prepare to explain yourself. 1. Your chosen parent will want to know why you want money. Your answer will be crucial in determining whether you get it. It will probably not be successful for you to lie about the reason, so be honest. There is nothing wrong with wanting a few bucks to get milkshakes with your friends or go to the movies. A parent is more likely to give you money to fund an activity. They support something school-related, an educational trip, a reputable event, etc. After all, this is the same rationale. Nonprofits use asking for charitable donations. 2. Asking for money to buy an item might be easier to explain. 4. Example, if you just made the school soccer team, needing a ball. To practice at home is pretty self-explanatory. If you're asking for something just for fun. Don't, say it's not fair or I need it. Do. Say I know it's not something I need, but I'm willing to earn it. 3. Have reasons to back up your initial request. The ideal scenario would be that once you tell your parent what you want money for, s forward slash he would give it to you without further questions. However, this won't always be the case. Tell them why the event is important to you, and why it isn't just a regular Saturday afternoon, for example. Come up with two or three supporting reasons why the money is important. 
For example, if you need money to go to a movie, you might have a few reasons ready, like, Nicole wants to see a movie for her birthday, and I promised her I would come to this birthday since I missed the last one or we've been fighting a little bit latterly. And I really want to make it up to her by going to the movies with her on her birthday. 4. Have an exact amount in mind. 3. This is where you get to show off your early budgeting skills, which they should respect. Tell them exactly how much it will cost, and leave buffer room for unpredictable expenses. Be honest about adding that amount in, and they should be impressed with your ability to create a budget. For example, look up the exact price of a movie ticket. Add the two bucks you always give your friend for gas money. Finally, say you want an extra three bucks for a soda or snack, though you don't know for sure if you will need it. If it is a more substantial cost for a road trip or dinner out with a date, come up with as precise a number as you can. Your Parents don't want you not to have fun, they just need to know. You have a mature understanding of budgeting. 5. Be prepared to negotiate. Your parents may not be excited about throwing you the entire cost of your dinner date, but they still want to help. Don't be intimidated by negotiation. If you're honest about your needs and are willing to Concede, negotiation can easily help you get more than nothing. 4. If your parents give you an absolute no. Don't, keep negotiating. Do, leave politely and wait for a chance to bring it up again by offering a new favor. 6. Offer something in exchange. Be willing to offer to do something you know. Your parents want. 5. For example, they may want you to do the lawn more often, so offer something chore related. This part of the conversation will likely become controlled by your parents. If they ask you to study more and pull up your grades this month in exchange, agree to it. 6. Following through with your promise will make them much more likely to barter with you like this in the future. 7. Be polite. Nothing says I don't take money seriously more than rolling your eyes when they seem skeptical. Convey to them you value their parental guidance and concern by asking nicely and saying thank you. 7. Making this an exchange between two mature parties will do wonders for your relationship with your parents. Method 2. Asking for money when you've moved out. Download article 1. Consider whom you will ask. By this point in your life, you probably have an idea of which parent is more likely to give you a few bucks. On the other hand, if you need a substantial amount of money, approach both of them together. Let them talk it over before you even make your case. You also might ask both parents together if they tend to be more indulgent as a couple than as individuals. Don't mention this to your friends, especially if they know your parents. Do talk to your siblings if your parents end up giving you money. If you keep it secret and they find out, it could cause resentment. 2. Prepare to talk about your budget and spending. As much as you might like to think that your budget is no longer your parents' business, asking them for money makes it their business. They probably won't expect you to present them with a printed out spreadsheet of your projected and actual monthly expenses. However, giving them a rough estimate will go a long way in 
demonstrating that you have a mature relationship with money. Allowing your parents to see a basic breakdown of where your money goes may help them feel more confident in giving you money, as long as your expenditures aren't frivolous in their eyes. Include a list of activities you participate in to earn money. Whether it be a job, a freelance writing gig, classes to further your education, etc. Your parents will want to see that you're making an effort, not just mooching. Don't lecture your parents about how to budget their money. Do make sure they can afford what you're asking for without affecting their safety net. 3. Demonstrate your interest in school or work. Show them how you are doing well in school. To make it even more enticing, show them how you even plan to improve. This makes your financial situation seem like a temporary problem, not permanent. It also makes you seem grateful for the support they have already shown you in your academic or early work career. 8. 4. Ask for a loan. Your parents may not deem it necessary for you to pay them back. They may instead see this as an investment on their part. However, telling them you are prepared to work hard to pay them back will further demonstrate your financial maturity. On the other hand, actually agreeing to pay them back for money will teach you valuable lessons in money management. You and your parents can negotiate the repayment plan as necessary, they may want the money sooner, they may want to charge interest, etc. Be willing to work with them to set up a repayment plan you're all comfortable with. Expert Q&A Question How do you get your parents to say yes to Robux? Supatratova, PSYD Road. Licensed Clinical Psychologist, PSY-31949. Expert Answer. Offer something in return. There's no sweeter words to a mom than I will do the dishes. Offer some chores and ask for an allowance and payment in return. If your parents see that they're gaining something valuable out of the arrangement, they're more likely to open their wallets. Not helpful 10 helpful 19. Question. How do I convince my strict mom to say yes? Supatratova, PSYD, Road. Licensed clinical psychologist, PSY-31949. Expert answer. Give thanks. Telling her how much you appreciate her is a great way to open up the conversation. Let her know that you're grateful for everything she does for you, like keeping you safe, housed, and fed. Just make sure that this isn't the first compliment you've ever given her, or else she'll definitely suspect your motives. Not helpful 12 helpful 21. Question. What is a polite way to ask for money? Supatratova, PSYD, Road. Licensed clinical psychologist, PSY-31949. Expert answer. Use proper manners, never demand anything. Even if your parents say no to your request, being polite and understanding will go a long way should you ever. Ask again or ask for something else. Not helpful 11 helpful 23. See more answers. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Don't let the time you ask your parents for money be the only time you talk or hang out with them. Boost your relationship so that your present interest in talking with them won't seem self-serving. 9. Accept and be grateful for whatever money they give you. If you act disappointed, annoyed, or entitled, 
they'll be much less likely to give you more money in the future. You should have a good reason why you need the loan to back you up if they ask. Why? How to fall asleep, for kids. Download article. Methods. 1. Dealing with fears, nightmares, and stress. 2. Creating a comfy sleep environment. 3. Following a consistent bedtime routine. Other sections. Expert Q&A. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Christopher M. Osborne, PhD medically reviewed by Chad Denman. Last updated, the 24th of June, 2024 approved. The average kid between ages 6 and 13 needs 9 to 11 hours of sleep per night, but nighttime fears, general worries, and poor bedtime routines can make this tough to achieve. 1. Creating a consistent pattern for going to bed and a calming place to sleep can help a lot. If fears or nightmares are your main problem, comforting activities or Talking to a trusted adult may solve your sleep troubles. Method 1. Dealing with fears, nightmares, and stress. Download article 1. Place comforting items within view of your sleep space. Comfort items like Teddy bears aren't just for little kids, some adults rely on them too. Weather it's a favorite stuffed animal in bed or your favorite posters or drawings on the wall nearby. Choose a few key items that will help ease your mind as you drift to sleep. 2. A hanging mobile with butterflies, action figures, or whatever you like might also help. Once again, these aren't just for babies. Try not to overload with comfort items, though. If your bed is packed with stuffed animals, it might become a less comfortable sleeping space. 2. Use a dim night light if you're scared of the dark. A dark room is best for sleeping, but a little bit of light is okay if it helps to calm you. Place the night light in a spot where it won't shine in your face and won't create any potentially Scary shadows on the wall or ceiling. 3. If you have a major fear of the dark, it may help to keep a small flashlight that isn't too bright nearby. That way you can quickly check your surroundings if needed. 3. Try a white noise machine if random sounds bother you. If creaky floors, street traffic, thunderstorms, or chirping crickets keep you awake, a white noise machine might help quite a bit. You can try using calming ocean waves, raindrops, or other soothing sounds to drown out the noises that prevent you from dozing off. 4. White noise machines provide a continuous background sound that can block out other noises without being distracting themselves. Alternatively, you could try using the continuous hum of a fan, a room humidifier, or an air purifier. 4. Skip scary shows and stories if nightmares are a problem. It's best to avoid any screen time for an hour or more before bedtime, but especially avoid scary shows, videos, or games. This kind of content may make you have more frequent and more frightening nightmares. 5. The same goes for books, skip the ghost stories and curl up with reading material that is familiar and calming. 5. Talk to a grown-up and draw pictures if you have nightmares. If you wake up from a nightmare and can remember at least some of the details, tell a parent or other trusted adult about it, either the next morning, or, if necessary,
during the night. Talking about what you've dreamed can help you to realize that it was NT real and isn't something to fear. 6. It can also help to sketch a picture of your nightmare. It might become less scary when you see it drawn out, and you can even rip up the paper afterward if that helps. 6. Discuss worries that keep you awake with a trusted adult. If stress about schoolwork, the big game coming up, talking to that girl you like, or your parents' arguments keeps you up at night, talk to someone about it. You can talk with a parent or grandparent, teacher, school counselor, or another adult you know and trust. 7. Just telling someone about what is worrying you can be a big relief and might help you sleep better. If stress is a major problem for you, talk to your parent, s, about seeing a licensed counselor or child psychologist. Quiz. Wikihow quiz, why can't I sleep? Whether your environment, your habits, or something else entirely is affecting your sleep, we've designed this quiz to pinpoint the source of your sleep deprivation. We've even included research-backed tips tailored to your situation. By the end of this quiz, you'll be on the road to a healthier sleep schedule. 1 of 12. Which of the following best describes your night time? Routine. Most nights, I scroll on my phone or look at emails before dozing off. I spend a long time laying in bed before going to sleep. I'm usually doing chores or work right before turning out the light. I have a specific pre-bed routine. I don't look at screens, and I might even try to meditate. Next. Method. 2. Creating a comfy sleep environment. Download article. 1. Make your bed an inviting place to sleep. Add a soft pillow or two, a comfy blanket, and maybe a single stuffed animal to keep things uncluttered. You want it to feel as though you could just melt away into sleep as soon as your head hits the pillow. 8. Also try to use your bed only for sleeping, instead of as your spot. For homework, checking your phone, building Legos, etc. This will help you associate your bed with only one thing, sleeping. 2. Keep pets, TVs, and other distractions out of your room. It might provide some initial comfort to have a favorite dog or cat cuddle up with you in bed, but pets tend to move around a lot and become distractions. A stuffed animal that Never needs to get up to use the bathroom is a better choice. 9. It's also best to keep distractions like TVs, computers, and cell phones out of your room, especially at bedtime. If you have to do your schoolwork on a tablet or laptop in your room, for instance, move the item to another room when it's bedtime. If you need an alarm to wake up, Use a standard alarm clock so you can keep your cell phone out of the area. It's also best to keep the alarm clock out of reach, so you have to get out of bed to shut it off. 3. Make sure the room is mostly dark and comfortably cool. Use blackout shades or curtains to keep the room as dark as possible, use just a small Night light if needed. Also, use fans, air conditioners, heaters, or just heavier or lighter blankets to reach your ideal sleeping temperature. 10. Most people tend to sleep better in a slightly cooler room with blankets for warmth, but you might have different sleep preferences. 4. Manage the best you can if you share a bedroom. If you share your sleeping 
quarters with a sibling, you may find that your notions of ideal sleeping conditions are very different. If they like it cooler than you, add a blanket to your sleeping spot. If they like it warmer, point the fan toward you. If they need a nightlight, ask your parents to plug it in away from your sleeping spot. 11. If you can convince them to work on establishing a consistent, relaxing bedtime routine along with you, you'll both sleep better. Method 3. Following a consistent bedtime routine Download article 1. Go to bed and wake up at the same time every day. You'll sleep better and Wake up more refreshed if you set up a consistent sleep schedule for every day, weekdays, weekends, even summer vacation. If you stay up late and sleep late on weekends, for instance, your body has more trouble figuring out when it's sleep time and awake time. 12. In the best case scenario, you'll be able to convince everyone in your family to adopt their own consistent, year-round sleep schedules. Otherwise, see if everyone can agree to slowly adjust their schedules, for instance, from the school year to summer vacation, over several days or a couple of weeks. That way, the entire household routine isn't changed dramatically overnight. 2. Move your bedtime back until you can wake up on time without help. If you sleep on a consistent schedule, say, 9 p.m. to 7 a.m., and are getting enough sleep for your body's needs, you should rarely if ever need an alarm clock. If you struggle to get up at the right time, it nearly always means you're not getting enough sleep. 13. Move your bedtime back by 15 minute increments every three nights until you start waking up on your own at the right time. Then use this as your consistent sleep schedule. 3. Don't drink any caffeine within 5 hours of bedtime. Even small amounts of caffeine can affect people, especially kids, for hours after drinking it. Try to Keep your caffeine intake to a minimum anyway, but especially avoid things like energy drinks and soda after mid-afternoon. 14. If you need caffeine to help you wake up or stay awake, you aren't getting enough sleep. 4. Avoid eating sugar before bed. Sugar will make you more energetic and make it harder for you to fall asleep. Instead of having a sugary nighttime snack, try having lightly seasoned popcorn or nuts. 5. Exercise for at least 60 minutes each day, but not after dinner. Exercise is great for your health, but working out too late in the day can give you a burst of energy and alertness that will keep you awake at bedtime. Instead, aim to fit in. Your hour or more of daily exercise any time before dinner. 15. The goal is to do moderate exercise, which means you're breathing heavier but can still carry on a conversation. Gym. Class, recess, and playtime after school can all count towards your 60 minutes. Exercising earlier in the day will help to tire you out for bedtime. 6. Stop looking at electronic screens at least an hour before bedtime. The blue light emitted by electronic devices with screens affects your body's internal sleep mechanisms and can keep you awake at night. Turn off the TV and put away your phone and tablet well before you start your bedtime. Routine 16. Reading an old-fashioned paper book is a far better choice for bedtime. 7. Take a soothing bath or do other relaxing activities. 
develop a consistent routine that signals to your mind and body that it's time to calm down, slow down, and prepare to sleep. A warm bath, maybe with some calming bubbles. Added, could serve as the first signal that your bedtime routine has begun. 17. You might also try deep breathing exercises, meditation, prayer, or simply having a calming chat with a loved one. 8. Read happy stories and write in a journal to clear your mind. Reading. Something that's calming and pleasing can help push your worries away for bedtime. Sometimes, though, it's even better to write in order to clear your mind. Pull out a journal and pencil and jot down what you accomplished today and what you look forward to doing tomorrow. 18. It's great to be able to focus on happy things in your journal, but it's also okay to write about your concerns or fears. Taking the time to put them down on paper can help to get them out of your head. Just try to end your writing session on a positive note. 9. Play relaxing music or count backward in your head. Put on a CD of your favorite soothing songs or sounds if that's what helps you drift off to sleep. Or try one of the time-honored tricks like counting sheep or counting backward. From 100, believe it or not, they really can work. 19. Focusing on something simple and inconsequential, like 62, 61, 60, 59 will help clear your mind of distractions and might make falling asleep happen much quicker. Expert Q&A Search Add new question Question What should I do if I can't fall asleep after 30 minutes? Chad Denman Sleep Medicine Provider Expert Answer Get up and do some stretching, reading and relaxation-focused breathing. Exercises Meditation or yoga can also help relax you and prepare your body for sleep. Yes no. Not helpful 3 helpful 3. Question What if you are way too excited about something that will happen tomorrow? Luba Lee, FNPBC, MS Board Certified Family Nurse Practitioner Expert Answer Take slow deep breaths, progressively relax your body, listen to a guided meditation, take a magnesium supplement and make sure your room is cool and dark. Yes no. Not helpful 22 helpful 82. Ask a question. 200 characters left. Include your email address to get a message when this question is answered. Submit.